Brian Mackey the other day shared a, a, a cool tip about keeping your columns and beams uh, synchronized when it comes to changing their elevation. And it's tied to a property in the beam. And I thought I'd record a video of it since uh, his blog shows how to do it, but it'd be more fun to see it in a video, I think. So if I select a beam, I've got the uh, analytical graphics on so that I can see the start and end. So these are the start, these are the ends based on the green and the red colors. And if I hover over the tooltip, I can see it says start level offset. So if I select both of these, I can go down here. And you see where it says start attachment distance? If I have it set to distance, instead of end elevation as I have it set now, then what that does is it allows me to set a value. So watch what happens if I set this to a, uh, to a one foot value. See how it drops below the beam? So it's creating a set sort of distance relative to the top of that column, and it only wants to go down. All right, so if I set it to zero, and if I check these other two and look at their value, they're set to distance as well. So the beauty of this is if you change the top of your column, to say uh, negative one foot, when it drops, the column tops follow nicely. So if I do the same kind of thing over here in this corner and change it from, and again, this is the start elevation, so I'm gonna change its distance. And I'm gonna change this one, and this is the end elevation. So it's important to be able to see the green and the, and the red ends of beams so that when you do change a value like this, that those steel beams follow the height of the column. So nice enhancement, uh, and like he wrote in his blog post, um, it's something that, he, it was subtle, I don't recall it being in any of the help documentation. If it was, I didn't read it or forgot about it promptly. So good tip to know, definitely helps keep these things aligned. Hope it helps.